Good afternoon and welcome back to Laurel Park. Thank you for joining us on the Sunday edition of Today at the Races. I'm Gabby Godette, joined by Stan Salter. And we have been extremely fortunate the past couple of days. You can ask for better weather this yeah, weekend. Another fantastic day here in Laurel, Maryland, as, as you couldn't get in as the water truck going by, getting a little sprinkle on the track. We just saw a jockey out there. Edgar uh, Prado. Edgar Prado, the Hall of Famer, getting his morning run in, getting ready for our nine race program. Uh, three nice carryovers as we had nothing but nice price winners uh, yesterday. I think it was one horse while well, the last price, uh, last race winner was a favorite too. So only mm -hmm. two horses that paid less than $10 yesterday. And show Walter putting on a show as well. Looks uh, that was a, a very impressive performance in our feature race on yesterday's card. So looking uh, forward to the future from that horse. Yeah, show Walter uh, talking to Gary Capuano after the race and you know they'll have to try to find a race you know mm -hmm. either not next level allowance race or maybe a stake because he, he won like a good thing yesterday he was a promising two-year-old uh, good to see show Walter with a little Orioles magic here yesterday at Laurel Park always uh, definitely always good to see that stand but well with yesterday in the history books we are less than a week out from Maryland Million Day I just tweeted something out Maryland's Day at the races Come out and join us at a special post at 12.15 p.m. And really, this is when everything starts getting going. We've got the post draw and the, the entries on Wednesday. We have the gala on Friday night. And then, of course, it all starts on Saturday. We've got so many events going on throughout the facility, too. And come out and actually see the facility. We've had so many renovations and improvements done over the past couple of months. And it's really something to see in the flesh. Yeah, they've done a lot of great changes and it should be a, a full house here for the 31st annual Jim McKay Maryland Million. You get a free cap, free uh, Maryland Million cap uh, to the first 4,000 racing fans who uh, purchase a program. And uh, talking to King Leatherberry and uh, Trevor McCarthy yesterday, McCarthy worked Ben's cat yesterday morning, said it was the best work uh, of the year. So Ben's cat looks like all systems go for the 10-year-old. Uh, he's he's, he's cross-entered in both the Maryland Million Sprint and the turf, but I, I think the connections are leaning uh, towards the Sprint. But we'll find out uh, Wednesday. Everybody can come to that happy hour draw in tips mm -hmm. on Wednesday. Yeah, you have to come out here and join us. It is at tips for that post draw. We'll be going through each race, race by race, and of course trying to get some interviews from some of the representatives and the connections. So it all starts now, but we have to really hone in on today, Sunday fun day here at Laurel Park. There's always a lot going on, including the Premier Players Challenge. That takes place in the final five races of the day. And Stan, I still really need to pick it up. I, for some reason, I just tank out on Sunday. I can do well on Friday and Saturday. We need to, we need to do well this week. Well, we're both due. Uh, we're both due to try to qualify for that $5,000 championship round. We have two more Sundays uh, to qualify for the, the $5,000 championship round. If you beat me, if you beat my picks, you, you earn an extra 500 uh, premier player points. So it's a cool contest. You can win money every Sunday and qualify for that big money round. So two more Sundays left for the Players Challenge. Okay, you can go and uh, fill out your own Players Challenge there. Uh, go visit guest services too and you can play along with us. We already have our picks in for the Premier Player Challenge and of course you have the Premier Parlay too. If you correctly pick a, a three-team three team NFL parlay and double your points for that premier player challenge so a uh, lot of stuff going on including sunday brunch and guess what three carryovers three nice carryovers too yeah we'll start in the opener the rolling super high five it's a low 15 percent takeout for the super high five and uh, we're just shy of 1900 for that a uh, nice carryover in the rainbow pick six. That'll start race four today. I'll have a ticket for that. That's a little over 2,200. And then, Gabby, you'll have a ticket for the big carryover of the day. The late pick five starts race five today with that low 12% takeout. Nice carryover there for that late pick five. It is. I'm excited to get to all of our featured wagers and our carryovers today. We'll take a look at our track and weather conditions. It's a beautiful day. Feels a little bit. It's, it's edging towards... Uh, summer instead of fall we're going to get into the low 70s and look at the beautiful green turf course we are going to be on the exceller and the bowl game courses lanes today for our nine races on tap so it's going to be fast and firm nine races out there on that nice green lawn and the dirt and we do start everything off at 12:30 p.m first post so 
Are you ready? Yeah, let's get right to it. First okay. carryover in the opener, rolling super high five. I have a, a, a ticket here for the rolling super high five, just shy of $1,900. Nice maiden special weight here in race one. This also kicks off the early pick five. Uh, but let's talk about the, uh, the super high five uh, at first here. The two in Bella's honor is going to be my top pick. I'll go two over the six, eight, and then using five horses for the bottom three spots. One, three, five, six, eight, an affordable $48 play for the rolling super high five. Nice carry over here in the opener. Okay, now we turn the page to the early pick five. Again, this is a mandatory payout, and so, so often do we see it sometimes paying three out of five, four out of five. It's very hard to hit it, but when you do, you're looking at a pretty penny there. $72 is going to be the early pick five for me, Stan. I couldn't find a single in the early pick five. I did, however, in the late pick five which we'll get to later, but three by two by two by three by four for a $72 play as we start things off in race one. But uh, it looks like you and I kind of agree with our top selection here, Stan, and that is the two in Bella's honor. Um, I'll let you talk about why you like her. I, I just can remember seeing her in the paddock, taking notes on her physicality and just how she was behaving, how she looked. And it just looked like she wants more distance, and that's exactly what she gets today. And talking to trainer Mike Trombetta, uh, when she ran in the Jamestown late September here at Laurel Park, and Trombetta saying she's going to want longer down the road. She's a well-bred filly by Malibu Moon, uh, the Bowman's Band, uh, Broodmare, Baltimore Bell. She was a runner, and I thought a useful effort uh, in, in the Jamestown there. And, and in fact, a, a horse that was in there, a speed gracer, a Susan Cooney horse, came back to win a nice maiden special weight uh, yesterday. So uh, in Bella honor coming out of a, a good race there she has that education and experience with the one start Forrest Boyce with the hat trick won three in a row yesterday so uh, jocks hot and uh, I like the barn I like the breeding here on the two hopefully picking up where Forrest left off on yesterday afternoon but yeah very beautiful sizable filly um, so looking forward to her getting that distance that she probably wants today in the opener but we have one race or uh, Yes, one race from Delaware that several horses come out of, Stan, and this is Silver Slivers. She has risen and sensitive, and all three of these fillies come out of the same race at Delaware. And overall, in my opinion, I thought it was a str the strongest performance in here was the number six, Silver Slivers. We can see her coming down the stretch, and she was wide late. She's probably the widest of all late. The winner went wire to wire in a slow pace, but she surged late, and she made an an impressive late bid. Uh, this, uh, you're getting a nice 10 to 1 price here on this two year old daughter on Bridled Song. This is a, a good spread race to start off that early pick five. They bet almost 16,000 in the early pick five yesterday. One ticket took it down for 14,000 as we had a bunch of early prices um, to start the, the card uh, yesterday. And that I have a 12 to 1 shot. We both have a 12 to 1 shot on top. Uh, she has risen, I think, a, a live a 10 to 1 shot. Uh, your second pick, who well, I don't have in my top three, but you have to respect the uh, the barn here. Alan Goldberg, Jevion Toledo aboard. Uh, good looking two-year-old filly by Scat Daddy there in the nine scattered thoughts. And that was the thing, though, because I think uh, sensitive for Michael Dickinson, this horse is going to be bet. Everybody loves to bet Michael Dickinson horses, and not to mention now Edgar Prado in the saddle, so you get the Hall of Fame factor in there, too. So uh, I think sensitive will be bet over Silver Slivers, but I thought it was a stronger performance for Silver, S Silver Sliver. Say that 10 times fast, it's not easy. Uh, so I will be using the six there and the nine scattered thought. I agree, I don't think she made much of an impact. I know it says she was pinched back at the break. She had full opportunity to overcome that after a little bit of trouble from the get-go. Um, but she kind of looks like one that doesn't want to close. She wants to be forwardly placed. So if she breaks well, maybe that's going to be the strategy yeah, for her. They're both very live, uh, strong connections. You have to use the six and the nine. I'll throw the eight in there as well. We're getting Edgar Prado who just had his morning run out there on the track uh, aboard here from Michael Dickinson. This was a well-backed filly in debut. She went off the favored tough maiden special weight up there at Delaware, a respectable fourth uh, that day in a tough field. She's uh, bred to be a good one. They paid almost a half million for her at Keeneland. So uh, three to one, you're not going to get too much value, but you have to, uh, have to I think, use her uh, in, in early pick five. I think I just saw Michael Dickinson walk in, too. Is he over, walking the turf course? Over in the corner. Out, I don't know. Out there on the Acceler? He probably. might be. <laughs> he might be. That is race one, though, a very interesting maiden race to once again kick off the early pick five and the super high five as we approach race two, a mile and a sixteenth on the main track for this maiden claimer. And I think you and I both agree that the road goes through the two 
clairvoyant for Tom Proctor, Ashley Christrinze. The, the duo has teamed up for uh, a couple of wins here. And judging by this horse's races at Tampa, I do think she's going to improve getting to a drier track today. Yeah, and uh, just she had a good effort in the slop uh, last out, a good second here to Crooked. It was a decent runner from the Linda Albert Barn, I think, on the drop that day. Uh, Tom Proctor Barn finally heating up around here at Laura Park. He wins races all over the country, and he's winning a bunch here uh, this fall so far. Three for nine is the barn, 33%, and he's teaming up here with his bug girl, Ashley Castrenzi. They're 26% together, so uh, this horse just looks like uh, much the best. Uh, Castrenzi should uh, be able to get a nice ground-saving trip, breaking from the two-hole uh, going two turns here. And you like the three, snuck a little fun a little bit. Last time out beaten by Clairvoyant, but that was on a sloppy steel track. Yeah, a three-time uh, beaten favorite here. The three snuck a little fun, but uh, we're getting Trevor McCarthy, the leading rider aboard for uh, a good barn, Cal Lynch. She's going to get a piece of it. She just doesn't like the, she's a little camera shy mm -hmm. uh, so far as a three-year-old, but she'll get a piece of it as will um, I have the four second-hand angel in there, Victor Carrasco, Hammy Smith. This horse switching from turf uh, to uh, uh, the dirt on the drop here a little bit. Uh, a wide open second here. Another spread race, I think, for the early pick four and the pick five. Yeah, I liked the seven, whether you're not. If you really kind of hone in on her races, she's technically dropping from maiden special weight company on the dirt to a maiden $10,000 race. So yeah, I don't think it's a quick give up, but she's had 13 opportunities to try to win, and she hasn't been able to. So I'll use her in the top two as well as we turn the page and we get to the third race and open $7,500 claiming event on the bowl game at five and a half furlongs. And uh, this is a, another interesting race. I thought I thought a tough race, Dan. You could probably make a case for several, and I wanted to use many in the early pick five. Uh, I, I don't generally pick uh, horses from the rail, sprinting five and a half here at Laurel, but uh, we're getting uh, Trevor McCarthy, our leading rider on the one, Sally O. Sally for trainer Dale Capuano. Uh, a nice win last out, 14 to one up there at Meadowlands at the open $6,000 level. She uh, came busting between horses there. Uh, a good late closing kick. That was one of her, her, her best uh, her turf wins ever. She has three wins on the grass, so uh, a tough assignment closing from the rail, uh, three to one we're not going to get too much value but uh, she's coming out of that strong race and I think McCarthy can do it uh, that that was the reason why I kind of overlooked her Stan is because she does draw that rail post she sits on a win where she closed and sometimes we don't have we don't see those deep closers sprinting on the turf especially breaking from the inside be able to repeat back to back but yeah. she does have the credentials in order to do it but the eight lady from Cheyenne is a horse that I'll take here uh, in my opinion uh, dropping in class uh, she hasn't faced this level of competition ever uh, or in a very long time she faced open ten thousand dollar claimers at Laurel so this is a much easier condition for her, in my opinion and she should be forwardly placed I think seven and a half furlongs was just a touch too far for her she likes a one turn distance this this distance five and a half yeah the last win came against open 10 up there at Delaware normally I love speed from the outside uh, it's a shipper coming down from Delaware here Harold Weiner the trainer uh, first start here this meet so uh, kind of want to kind of why we know Ricardo Chappie around mm -hmm. here well but um, it, you're getting a nice price I'm not going to talk you off that horse uh, too much but um, it's, it's a not your cup of tea not my cup of tea uh, <laughs> today we both like the six those stormy mistress from the Bill Comlo barn this horse had to break from the inside last out up there at Delaware and it went to the front a good second uh, against 16 uh, three life company up there uh, she was put up via the DQ as uh, she had some trouble there in the stretch Javion Toledo uh, aboard here for a, a barn I respect so I'll go with the local connections here on the the six stormy mistress yeah that was the the deal with stormy mistress I like her I I, the only thing is, if the eight lady of Cheyenne does show that speed that she's been known to, she's going to be hounding that Philly to her inside every step of the way. So I think this race might be a rider's race, and you're right. If those two hook up on the front end, it'll pave the way for your top selection towards the inside with leading rider Trevor McCarthy aboard. I thought a wide open race. You even used the two in the mix, Synergist, who she just hasn't had that the same late kick that we're always known to see her but like I said the pace might set up for her. she she doesn't like to win too often but um she does uh, have have three wins on the grass here at Laurel always likes to get a piece of it Julian Pimentel he came back to riding on mm -hmm. Friday won the last race on Friday won a race yesterday Pimentel always the top journeyman rider here uh back and looking good so uh, Julian Pimentel gets on the six to one shot here the two synergist okay let's turn our attention to the fourth race on the card of five 
$5,000 claiming event. Non-winners of two lifetime seven furlongs on the main track. This does kick off the 20 cent rainbow six. Stan, you took a stab at the sequence today. We have a carryover, a nice carryover, over $2,200 for today. A uh, tough race to kick it off here. Race four, a nickel two life going seven furlongs. I'll go four deep here in <coughs> race four using the three, six, eight, nine. I'll go five deep in race five. That's a spread race. Maiden special weight going long on the bowl game turf course. Then I'll go three deep in race six going three deep in race seven. I was a heavy favorite in there. The seven called in sick in race seven. That horse is four to five. You have to use that horse, but if you can beat that horse may with maybe a price, I have a couple first time starters, the three and a four, the three from the Mary Epler barn, the four from the Hammy Smith barn there in race seven. My best bet of the day, key horse here on the pick six is the four, Pernata. Fergal Lynch aboard for Kieran McGee in race eight. Pernata is three to one. Then I'll go two deep in the finale. So nice day to play the rainbow pick six. A, a total pot of gold at the end of the rainbow will be around 5000 if you can get a couple nice price uh, winners on your ticket and take it down. Okay, let's hope so. Best of luck to you and your ticket, Stan, as we start things off with the fourth race. And wanted to go back and revisit a replay of the number nine in here, Drive at Night, last time out on a sloppy seal track. Now, this was going five and a half furlongs, and this, in my opinion, was a legitimate performance. They didn't go that fast in front of them. The pace held together relatively well. Guns and Rosies, I believe, went wire to wire, and he still closed from off of it. It's an impressive performance. Yeah, got up for a, for a good second here, going five and a half furlongs. I know he's 0 for 5 going seven furlongs, but looking at that replay, it looks like the seven furlongs should hit him right between the eyeballs here. Javion Toledo should have a trouble-free stalking trip from the outside. This horse likes to be on the outside. Uh, he had a few bad races where he kept drawing the rail. He likes to be on the outside in the clear, and that's the kind of trick he's going to get today here for uh, for a good barn trainer Damon Dillo DeVico uh, three to one I'll, I'll take that here uh, to kick off the pick six and I think it's worthy of noting that all of those the 0 for 5 record at the distance was prior to when he broke his maiden and sometimes horses the light bulb clicks after they break their maiden and I think that was the case with this horse he broke his maiden by five came back with a nice performance in his uh, subsequent start so I don't uh, disagree with you I think this is a must use in, in the pick six we have the five big brother Bubba though and I think this is a horse that will get overlooked he dropped down to the five thousand dollar level last time out he obviously does not like the slop he didn't run well in that race he didn't run well when he went against allowance company last year in the slop too so now getting to a dry surface big class relief and at seven eights he's never been this distance he has a little bit of speed at shorter distances he could wire the field all right well i like the 12 to 1 price you're getting there and you're getting the, the hard trying laura lee glazier uh, and if the race falls apart where horse could come uh, come running late just uh, three uh, races so far this year and it hasn't come close but he gets he gets a fast track today uh, mm -hmm. at the bottom that could wake him up i'll throw the six in there uncle woodrow from the jamie ness barn a five length winner last out breaking his maiden for a maiden nickel, two turns up there at Delaware. Uh, Trevor McCarthy aboard here today. It looks like this horse will like the seven furlongs. He's 0 for 2 at, 0 for two, uh, at, at the seven furlongs, but like you just said, he finally broke his maiden. Maybe the confidence is up. We're getting Trevor McCarthy. Uh, looks like he'll have a four-place uh, trip, maybe sitting the second or third going into the far turn. Yeah, I thought this was definitely a spread race because these are the races that usually kick you out of those multi-race sequences because someone just pops up at a big price. Even <coughs> the two at Trois, a horse that I didn't use, but uh, does get to the main track, a fast main track for the first time. Uh, Colmont Kid is another horse I'll round it out with, but a tough race to start that pick six with. Once again, we have a carryover over $2,200 in that sequence today. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk about the late pick five, another nice carryovers. Carryovers galore right after this. Save the date, October 22nd. Don't miss the 31st annual running of the Jim McKay Maryland Million at Laurel Park. Entertainment for the whole family. Don't miss the fun at Laurel Park, Saturday, October 22nd. For more information, visit MarylandMillion.com or MarylandRacing.com. Welcome back to Today at the Races. I'm Gabby Audette, joined by Stan Salter. We just talked about the Rainbow Six with that carryover of $2,200. Now we take a look at the late pick five. We have a carryover 
48.57, a nice juicy carryover, 50 cent minimum there, and an industry low takeout at 12%. So more money for you, and hopefully we can take this down. Stan, my ticket's gonna be $64. I have a good feeling about this one. We're hitting the all button in the first leg. It's a maiden special weight. There's eight horses in it. I think it's very difficult. There is one horse that I think stands out amongst the rest, but we'll be trying to beat that horse with a short, uh, longer price. We go to the sixth race using four horses in that leg of the sequence. As we get to race seven, I'm keen off of the seven called in sick. I think it's his race to lose. Yes, it's a questionable drop, but I just couldn't see, I couldn't try to beat the horse. So that's gonna be my key horse in the sequence with the 1.7, with the 1.11 there, $64. We start here with the fifth race. And um, Sam, this is a, we start on the bowl game for this maiden special weight. And I think there's one uh, really legitimate contender in the four kabang for trainer Mike Trombetta. We'll go back and we'll look at this performance from Saratoga. This was on the 6th of August when he went against Tricked Up. He was just beaten narrowly by Tricked Up. That was a Chad Brown horse who uh, really performed nicely that day. Stan, he, he came out of that race or he, and faced uh, Maiden Special Weight Company again at Saratoga. That race producing a couple next out winners at Belmont too. So we can see him down on the inside in the live oak plantation colors. And he's just grinding out a run against a very salty group of maidens. Yeah, a couple nice races up there at Saratoga. Got an 86 and an 83 buyers up there. Uh, the last race down there at Kentucky Downs, I, they kind of go around hills. and they, It's all they over the place. It's a ride a Ferris wheel. It's, it's <laughs> a little different down there. So some horses don't like it. So just put a line to that last race at Kentucky Downs where uh, he'll like the grass here. He trains here. Uh, I, I, I have him uh, in my, my top three. A deserved uh, you know, main rival to beat. I just think uh, you're getting seven or two, so some good value on there. A lot of money will go to the Matt's horse, the two, uh, Brew Carita. Uh, but I'm going to go with the one, uh, Praise the Moon, with the Hall of Famer Edgar Prado aboard. I think the one, uh, you get great value at nine to two. Prado will get a ground-saving trip here for trainer Niall Seville. Uh, the last, uh, the most recent turf try, uh, with two back here at Laurel. A good second to Silver Romeo, who's come back and run well against Allowance Company a couple times. So I just think the one gets the trip, and you're getting a good nine to two price. Okay, that is why I click the all button because I don't necessarily like that horse, but I do still think he is a danger. We have a couple of first-time starters in here, including the three El Fuego, a first-time starter, th a three-year-old here, a $200,000 purchase at the Keeneland September sale for trainer Tim Woolley. This horse is very nicely bred. He is by pulpit out of a Giants Causeway mare. The mare was a half to a grade two winner. She has not produced any turf winners, and this horse is uh, actually a half-brother to Verrazano, your 2006 Haskell winner. So the pedigree is there. Can he perform at first asking? Well, he's got a first-time starter from the Tim Woolley barn who has some decent stats with his debut runners, a positive ROI, and also putting horses. I know he's, this horse is a first-time starter, but uh, when the Woolley barn tries to turf for the first time, they've had a couple uh, nice price winners here at Laurel Park. They're four for 12 recently with a nice positive ROI, over $13. So uh, he trains up there at Fair Hill. He works on the uh, synthetic surfaces up there, uh, probably works on the turf up there as well. So his turf, uh, his, uh, turf starters are normally a uh, well-prepared uh, Ricardo Chappie uh, on the three. So that's a nice six to one price you're getting. Hey, you know what I notice is that the majority of horses in this race have been training at Fair Hill. We have Niall Seville with the one, Michael Matz with the two, obviously Tim Woolley, Mike Trombetta has a barn up at Fair Hill, and of course, uh, Graham Motion in here as well. Stan, you like the two Brucarita a little bit for Michael Matz, and today is the day that this horse needs to win because he has been the beaten favorite in the past three starts. Yeah, um, a money burner for sure. He's probably frustrated of a bunch of people. That was, that was a strong effort uh, the last race, early July here at Laurel Park. Had to come four wide, but a, a good second. Got a respectable 71 buyer second time. Uh, he's done that. So now he's had the month of August off. Uh, he's, he's, he's fresh today. Some decent works up there at Fair Hill. Victor Carrasco gets aboard for the first time. Should get a nice trip, uh, saving ground on the inside. Okay, I'll use a six. Gemini rising a little bit. The other Grand Motion horse, the seven Novalis, did scratch, but it's the same premise as uh, my top selection in that I don't think he necessarily liked the configuration at Kentucky Downs. Some horses love it. 
Some hate it. I'm giving him a pass for that. Now they go back to the drawing board. He is by Kate Blanco out of a smart strike mirror. You would think that he would like a little bit more distance than six and a half, and he does get Lasix with Trevor McCarthy. So I will be using him as well to kick off the early pick five as we turn the page to the six on the card. We head out to the Acceler turf at five and a half furlongs. Non-winners of two lifetime in for the $16,000 claim. And I think we need to start the conversation off by the one abracadabra, what is this horse doing in here? He's been recently second against Allowance Company, now off a layoff since March, in for the $16,000 tag. Yeah, it looks like the for sale sign might be on her. Uh, by Spites down out of a ghost sapper mare, so she's probably worth 16000 alone uh, for, for, for breeding uh, potential. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a lot of red flags, question marks here. Uh, first time in the barn for, for Wayne Potts. Uh, he, she's well spot spotted. She's supposed to win here. Uh, she'll get a gr ground saving trip with Forrest Boys coming off that three win uh, day yesterday. Um, cutting back in, in distance from that last race, but that was last March uh, down in Tampa. So mm -hmm. I used a horse third. Uh, I, I used a horse protectively on my uh, pick six ticket, but I think there's some good value uh, if the one doesn't ha is not on her A game here today, and she'll be a short price. She will be, and a very questionable move there. The nine gal royale is the horse you opt for for trainer Kieran McGee. That's my, uh, yeah, just broke the maiden finally last time in her 12th start, so hopefully the confidence is up. Edgar Prado gets aboard for Kieran McGee who's uh, having a nice meet here. He's in the top five leading trainers. I think Prado will get a nice uh, trouble-free stalking trip from the outside here, and we're getting great value here at 12-1. to 1. Okay, I'll go to the 11 Bucklebury to the outside for Laura Roadcap. I love the fact that this horse has speed. He has an outside post position. He has options. She has options, excuse me. And not only that, I think she's getting a tremendous class relief from that starter optional claiming condition. Um, so I think all signs point to an improvement for that five-year-old mare. And the more I look at this race, Stan, I know we don't use her in the top three at all. The more I keep going back to the two cowgirl creed so maybe another horse to to revisit because i know she was taking a big drop in class for graham last time out but she drew the rail she had some trouble maybe a little bit better of a post position today um and she is one that could get overlooked and she does look like the main speed in here yeah beaten it at four to five last time but she had a couple of excuses like you said broke from the rail checked at the eighth pole there mccarthy stays aboard here for a good barn motion barn on fire this fall they're winning they're winning everywhere so you'll get much better value on the two today cowgirl creed at seven and two for strong connections all right, we turn the page to the eleven, the seventh race. Excuse me, I made it. Seven eleven. You're thinking. Seven eleven, right? We good, go to the eleven and then good carry day, on. Good day. Good day for a Slurpee. <laughs> we should have gotten free Slurpees on seven eleven. You know they do that. It's fun. Anyway, fun fact of the day: five and a half furlongs. On to the main track here for the seventh race to kick off our final pick three of the day. And the seven called in sick is the horse to beat this two-year-old filly. We go back to the big T, Saratoga of the South here. Timonium. She was not a winner, but she did finish second behind Wild Cheers. And Wild Cheer Cheers came back out to win a starter optional claiming condition. Next out, getting a 56 fire speed figure. So that was legitimate. She looked like she was running. Big question is, why the quick give up? Yeah, well, they, they tried to the maiden special way to Delaware after that impressive debut. She was about six to five, seven to five at Delaware and just uh, didn't like to track up there. Got uh, a little tired, I think, chasing uh, wide on the outside. So uh, a big drop uh, here and sometimes you don't know what happened. Sometimes maybe the, the maiden 25 didn't go or something mm -hmm. and uh, the owners say, I'll just put her in here. They want to win a race. So um, I, I have her on top. She looks much the best, but a couple nice first time starters in here. Uh, the three, page two, the four, all this jazz. Don't look at the breeding. Breeding doesn't matter here for maiden 16. Just look at the barn. Mary Epler, She's your leading trainer this fall. She's had a, a phenomenal year with first-time starters. 28% with her first-time starters. Uh, positive ROI, almost $4. And then uh, the four, all this jazz from the Hammy Smith barn. We all know how good he is with first-time starters, and you'll get great value on both. And he's standing right there. there Should we ask him how this first-time starter is? Maybe we'll ask him in a little bit, and we'll get back to you in uh, the afternoon show. But I agree with you. The three page two, Mary Epler, fantastic job with our maiden claimers. And Cal Nations, yeah. they are precocious. So yep. I think that's there. All this jazz too. Uh, you see a little bit of synthetic uh, success on the bottom side of that pedigree. And we also have the 11 across America. Across America is gonna be a big, big shot. And 
if you remember correctly, Cicela, the winner of that race, was dropping from a restricted maiden special weight at Saratoga. So that race was extremely tough for a maiden $16,000 race, and it was on the slop. She has every room to, she has all the room to improve in her second start on a dry track. But that is the seventh race, I think. It's sink or swim for the favor the four to five favorite in there. I'm going to use her in the uh, Rainbow Six. I remember this, uh, the 11 across America. Good looking filly in the paddock mm -hmm. for the debut last time. She went off a big 50 to one. She looked so good in the paddock and went and uh, put a few bucks on her across the board. And uh, uh, yeah, she didn't, uh, she had little problems at the gate. I'm sure the, the Barnes figured that out and got that all straightened out. Steve Hamilton stays aboard. We'll get a nice price again today here on this filly uh, across America. Yeah, don't, if you're trying to beat the favorite in there, I wouldn't leave her off your ticket because she did look well in the paddock. And and it was a sloppy sealed track and that race was very tough with some crazy class droppers doing a 10 length winner so who knows what she can do in her second start we get to the eighth race the first half of the late daily double in the bowl game at a mile and a 16th our feature race of the day the starter optional claiming event stan you love the four pernata you love her so much you're going to single her in your pick six. Yeah, and here's her, uh, her her last race at Laurel, late July. She's had a little time off since then. Comes into this race fresh for Kieran McGee. Uh, she comes four wide with a rally this day. Gets up for a decent third. Dancing Lucy, who was second in this race, would come right back to win. So I think it was a strong race. Fergal Lynch stays aboard for Kieran McGee. Those two, about 26%. Uh, she's uh, coming in this race, um, like I said, fresh. This was her last race late July. Uh, the Barnes, 21% with a positive ROI with horses coming off this kind of freshening so I think uh, Lynch will get a ground saving trip from the inside here on the four per not and we'll get three to one that's a decent uh, decent price for a best bet and not to mention that was sprinting that was five and a half furlongs and she is a versatile filly she has showed that in the past she can really go any distance but I think her best distance is going to turns where she can use her speed and get into uh, a more appropriate position rather than closing when she tur turns back to one turn so I I respect her in here, but I do land on the seven. That's my bay, uh, primarily because you look at her race, two starts back, uh, she opened up on the field by eight lengths. She wasn't able to harness her early speed. Uh, it was kind of running off a little bit and then faded to finish fifth. But last time out, I thought she harnessed her speed a bit better. She was beaten by a better horse that day and super sharp, but now comes back to the right surface. She has the speed. I think she's the one to catch. I, I overlooked this one a little bit. The Barn Joseph Arbor Vatanza won a race here earlier. Uh, has uh, some decent stats for the year. He's starting to run more horses down here. Um, I, I think he was stabled at Delaware and you see some Delaware works here. So uh, it is, is a Delaware outfit. Uh, he gets the leading rider, Trevor McCarthy aboard. Uh, the last race here at Laurel in July wasn't very good, but that was against better. So she has every right to uh, uh, to improve here uh, against uh, easier company, I think, with Trevor McCarthy aboard. Okay, and I'm looking for uh, the miracle worker here, Hassan Alamri, to throw into the exact of the one Noor I own. Uh, we've seen her so many times in the circuit. Yes, she's only two for 23, but she is dropping from allowance company, and I think that's a significant drop. She has been well beaten. She's been capable of hitting the board against allowance company here at Laurel, so I'm going to use her. I don't have a very solid grasp of her, but she is getting a, a uh, tremendous class relief here. She's, uh, yeah, she could wake up here with a class relief. She's 0 for 5 here at Laurel in, in bad form, but uh, Hassan doing the right thing, trying to get her in a race to wake her up a little bit. Jockey a little bit cold uh, on the year, especially here at Laurel, but um, you're, you'll get a decent That's 10 to 1 price. That's why she's a long, uh, a big price, That's why right? You get, yeah, you'll get the <laughs> 10 to 1 uh, or better for sure. Okay, that is the eighth race, a very interesting race. You single in there, I don't single in there in the in the late pick five, um, but a fun race to handicap. We get to the ninth and final. We start things off with a nice maiden special weight. We end things with a nice maiden special weight on the Acceler turf course at a mile and a 16th. And I land on the one recoil here, uh, Stan. You know, in the past two starts, I think this Colt has faced <clears throat> very good for level maiden special weights. We saw Undulated. He looks like a talent horse last time out boys from Boston he ran away with things uh, I think by over four lengths that day and he's just bred to like the distance he's by Lonro out of that Mr. Greeley mare uh, there's really no beating 
the, the favorite last time out. Uh, coming out of a couple tough races here, the one should get a beautiful ground saving trip from the inside with McCarthy aboard. They paid over a quarter million dollars for this two year old by Elon Rowe. I love the turf pedigree, a good closing second last time going five and a half. It looks like he'll love to stretch out the two turns. Uh, the debut race back in August, what a tough race that was, undulated, sleepless. Uh, those were two very good horses. So uh, the one's uh, the, the main horse to beat. You got a nice nine to two price on that runner. This is a, a tough, we have a, a three very nice maiden special weight races. We start with one, we end with one, so uh, some good prices here. I'll go with a six to one shot on the outside here for the red hot Graham Motion. He's red hot here, uh, not just at Keeneland, but here at Laurel Park, 21% uh, this fall, four wins from 19 starts. I love the breeding here by Scat Daddy out of a Not For Love mare. Angel Cruz won a grade one for him down there at Keeneland, so you know his confidence has to be up. And this horse had a decent debut sprinting back in July on the turf. That was a tough race. Great Bulls of Fire would come out of there to win. And then the, uh, the stretch out to a mile late September here. An okay race uh, that day. Now he gets the blinkers on for, uh, for Grand Motion, and uh, I'll give this horse another shot going long on the grass. Okay, I agree with you. I like when horses can pair up uh, pretty similar buyer speed figures. It often kind of paves the way for them to really improve in their third career start. So uh, you and I agree with the one and the 11. That's where I'm going to that's where I'm capping it off <laughs> in the late pick five. So I can understand some people using the seven, Mr. Meister, a first time starter for Bill Mott, but it, there, it's no secret. Bill Mott's horses, they usually, you know, he's not, uh, he doesn't put full importance uh, to win first time out. And this looks like a like a homebred, uh, bred by bred and owned by Irving uh, Cowan down there in Kentucky, a well-bred horse out of an AP Indy mare by Bodie Meister. Mm -hmm. um, so they're, they're probably thinking li later on down the road, either this year or next year. So um, the, the, I, I, I like the horse. I think you have to certainly respect the horse Prado aboard. Um, but seven and two, you're not going to get much value. And we know uh, the Mott horses, they, mm -hmm. they get better with their second and third start. They really do. The mare, she raced twice on the turf. She lost twice on, on the turf. But still, a very nice pedigree, I think. Uh, will, I will try to go against the horse, though. But he, he does post a very sharp workout on the 7th of October on the turf up at Saratoga. So uh, maybe similar weather. I think it might be a little bit chillier up there, though. What do you think this Saratoga? time of year? Oh, it's way better down here. <laughs> way better. No, uh, I'm saying it might be a little bit colder up there right now this yeah. time of year. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's getting getting chilly. George Weaver likes it up there. He stays up there year round. <laughs> but um, but um, even though he trains all the Maryland breads down here for Shamrock, but. <laughs> It's all good. It's beautiful a, Sunday fun day it's here. Funny Laurel. world we live in. Yeah. No, it is a beautiful Sunday. And once again, I want to remind everybody we have the Premier Players Challenge. Do take part in that. That happens in the final five races of this afternoon. We've got a wonderful card, wonderful, wonderful fall weather as well. So come out here and join us at Laurel Park. And best of luck on this nine race program.